Hi, and thanks for stopping by to check out this tutorial for the crop section of FarmBright. In this video, you'll learn how to create and map your grow locations, and then define the types of crops you grow and add plantings for them. We'll also take a quick look at the crop plan to help you plan your season. If you haven't watched our main Getting Started video yet, we recommend that you take a minute to start there, as it will give you a good introduction to the FarmBright system overall, and help you get a foundation for some of the concepts we're going to cover here. The goal of this video is to show you what you can do in the crop section, but not every step on how to do it. You can find more details and full step-by-step -step instructions in the crop section of our Help Center. You'll find many articles that walk you through the details, but if you browse through here and still have questions or need help, you can always submit a support request from this same menu. Let's start by navigating to plantings from the left navigation menu. You'll see five main sections here. You can add your crop types and individual plantings under My Crops and define where you're planting them, your beds, fields, greenhouses, and more, under the Grow Location section. The crop plan will show you a high level overview of your season with what, when, and where you're planting. And the location map is an aerial view of your farm. It helps you visualize your grow locations. You also have a yield comparison report that compares breeds of different crops so you know which one produces best for you. Now we've already added a lot of data to this account, but when you first start, these will all be blank for you to start configuring your farm. It's up to you if you want to start adding new crops or grow locations first, but we might suggest starting with grow locations. This is because you'll define the space you have available to plant, which might help you plan what crops you'd like to plant. Many FarmBright users find that having the farm map visualized helps you get a lay of the land and plan to utilize your property to its fullest potential. To create a grow location, click on New Location, and then give it a name. We'll then add some details about the grow location. You can choose what type it is, whether it's a field, greenhouse, grow room, or more. And then you'll make an important selection to decide your planting format. You can read the descriptions to decide what's best for you, but if you have a market garden with many different kinds of crops, you might choose planted in beds. If you're growing a single commodity crop, you might choose row crop. If you're going to plant a pasture with a cover crop to harvest hay and feed your animals, you'll probably choose cover crop, or you can use other for many other types of unique situations. We're going to use planted in beds in our example. So what we're really defining is that Southeast Field A is broken into five beds that are each 100 feet long and three feet wide. The number of beds, bed length, and bed width are all customizable for your unique layout. And if the beds aren't all the same size, don't worry, you'll be able to update them individually later. You can supply the acreage if you know the size of the entire field. But we'll see in a minute how FarmBright will automatically calculate this for you when we map the field. You can also choose a status and a light profile. And if we had planted a cover crop for our livestock to graze, we could also add how long we would prefer this field to rest until it was grazed again. Let's save. And now we have a new field added that we could either map or skip and get right to planting. Let's go ahead and map it. The map will load based on your farm address. And you can always zoom out and then move the map if you need to map a grow location in a different area. We're going to outline our field. And we'll see it automatically connected to the grow location we just created. Also note the acreage calculation here as well. We'll save and then scroll up. And we can use the next button to add plantings. You heard me say a minute ago that you'll be able to update the size of the beds. You saw when we just mapped the field that the bottom bed was maybe a little bit shorter. So I'm going to go to bed 5 and choose edit. And instead of 100 feet, we'll make that 80 and then save. And you'll see the square footage of the bed automatically updated. And if you needed to add more beds to the grow location, you can click add beds here. The beds added would be in addition to the ones already set up. Now that we have a grow location defined, the next step would be to plant crops in it. However, 
Be aware if you'd like to create more grow locations before creating any plantings, that's totally fine too. You could define all your fields and all of your beds, and then take a look at the location map to get a sense of what you have available to use. And if you want to get even further detailed with the map, you can also add your beds and connect them with that existing grow location. After you've optionally defined more grow locations and added to the map, when you're ready to add plantings, navigate to My Crops. This is where you'll define what you'll be growing. And that's an important distinction. Since you can have the same crop planted in multiple fields or beds, you'll likely want to track those plantings individually, but also want a comprehensive summary of the crop type overall. The crop type also houses information that is applicable to all of your plantings. To add a crop type, click New Crop Type. FarmBright comes preloaded with hundreds of crops for you to choose from. You'll find many varieties of vegetables, lots of different fruit trees, and herbs and flowers as well. The seed packet details for these crop types that you find here are also preloaded in the system. But don't worry if you can't find what you're looking for, as you can always add your own unique crop types and supply those details yourself. Just type what you want to name it, and it will be added as a crop type. In our example, we're going to grow some peppers, and we'll define the variety as hatch green chili. You can optionally supply an internal ID for harvest traceability, but if you don't add it, one will automatically be generated for you. You could add another crop type right now if you wanted to, but we'll move on to planting details. And this is where we see all the preloaded details from the FarmBright Crop Dictionary. Things like how many weeks to start your seeds before your last frost, how long those seedlings take to emerge, the spacing for when they're planted, its light requirements, and the days until the plant is mature enough to harvest. And if you want to account for unique needs for a unique variety or your specific climate, you can always update any of this information too. And one quick note about frost and measurements while we're on this page, you can configure your hardiness zone and the measurement units within your FarmBright account settings. So it's easy to switch this to metric if you'd like. You can also choose your start method. You might direct sow some crops while others are started in trays, or it could be perennial bulbs or even grafted trees. And speaking of perennials, if we were creating something like a fruit tree or a berry bush, we could mark this crop type as a perennial, and our planting of that crop type would be retained season after season. It's also important to choose how you harvest this crop, bales, bushels, ounces, pounds, or tons might be applicable. And for budgeting and forecasting, you might supply how much you think you can sell a single harvest unit for. In this case, we might get 250 a pound for these special hot peppers. And also related to forecasting, you might input your expected yield per 100 feet or per acre. Then we can save and will be brought to that crop type to add a planting. If you ever needed to change any of the crop type details that we just saw, you can go to the details tab and edit anything that you need. Now that we have our crop type defined and we've created a grow location, we can now plant these peppers in a bed in Southeast Field A. There are a few different ways for you to start that process. We'll take a look at each of them right now, and in the end, it's kind of up to you which one you find easiest. First, Right from this page in the crop type, we can choose Add Planting, and then select our grow location. You'll see that FarmBright has used some of the data that we supplied in the crop type to pre-fill important planting details. It's used our hardiness zone and frost dates to determine the best time to plant it, and then used the plant spacing and the size of the bed that we selected from our grow location to calculate how many of these peppers can fit in that bed. You could change this if you don't want to plant the whole bed with this crop, but for now, we'll fill up bed 5. Also note the option at the top for number of plantings. If you'd like to set up succession plantings of this crop in this grow location, you can define how many plantings you'd like to create, and then the days between them. This helps ensure that you get maximum utilization of this grow location and this crop during your season. We'll go back and just leave this as one though, and scroll down, and see that FarmBright has used the days to maturity on the crop type to determine your planned first harvest. 
It's also used the expected yield per 100 feet to determine an expected harvest for the amount that we've planted. You can add additional details about the seeds if you need, and then choose if you'd like to add or update tasks for the planting dates. We think this might be useful for you, as it will automatically create tasks for the planting and harvest dates. We'll click Create Plantings, and that planting has been created. I want to point out that this planting is shown under Future Plantings. We're at the stage where we're planning to plant these crops, and it's before April 18th, 2024, when I'm recording this video, so this planting is shown on our future schedule. So now that we have bed 5 planted, let's learn some of the other methods to plant using the other beds. We'll choose the Actions button in the upper right, and we see choices to Calculate Plantings or Bulk Plant. Let's check out Bulk Plant first. You can use this feature to plant multiple fields and beds with the same crop at the same time. You'll first choose a planting date, and then how you'd like to measure the space available for planting. Then pick a location, and a bed if applicable, and add how much of that bed you'd like to plant with this crop. We could then add another location. The same field is selected by default. This time we'll choose a different bed and plant the whole bed as well. You could continue adding locations, choosing different fields and different beds. And then, like we saw before on the individual planting, you can also add tasks for the planting date and estimated harvest dates. We'll create those plantings and now see that we have four out of the five beds in our field planted with these peppers. Now let's take a look at calculating plantings. You could think of this as an estimation tool that works backwards. You might find this useful if you have commitments and deadlines for this crop, like fulfilling CSA shares. Rather than choosing when you're going to plant this crop, you add how much you need and when you need it, and then FarmBright will automatically calculate how many plants are needed, when you need to plant them, and how much space you need for them. We can then choose an available location. We'll plant bed one. We have enough free space there to meet our needs, but if we didn't, we could have added a location until we met our total. And of course, we'll want to add those tasks for our planting dates. And now see all five of our beds planted in this grow location. I still want to quickly show you two more ways to add plantings though. First, you can go up to Quick Add, and you can add a planting right from here. This works just like the Add a Planting button, where you'll choose your crop type and location, and then the details. And then we can also go back to Grow Locations, and find our field, and see that we can create new plantings here too. We don't have any free space, so I'm going to create one bed. And when I click New Planting, we'll see a list of all of our crop types on the left. This works as a drag and drop. So I put the hot peppers into bed six, and it's all pre populated for me. And again, just like we saw before, all of the crop details are already here. I'll create the planting, and we'll see it added to bed six. Now that our beds are filled with plantings, we can get a comprehensive view of our season under the crop plan. This chart outlines our entire year, showing us what we're planting, where we're planting it, and when we're starting it, watching it grow, and harvesting. This helps you prepare for your season at a glance to make sure you stay on track. You now know a lot more about configuring FarmBright for your crops. You can create your grow locations, define your crop types, and then plant them. In the next video in this series, we'll talk about how you can track records of them as they grow throughout the season, and then harvest them and add them to your inventory. Thanks for watching.